What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Speed Sim. My name is Amy. And I'm E-House. And today we're going to be talking about a variety of different pouches, pros and cons, and what we prefer to use on the Airsoft Battlefield. Yeah, so this actually came up because we, obviously it's winter, so yep. we're always messing with our stuff. All the time. And we started talking about where we like certain pouches and what situations, and then it occurred to us we had never actually made a video on this subject. No. And then it might be nice because you see a lot of videos about this from like, people like me, straight gear whores, but we don't see a lot of it that includes like the Speedsoft's perspective, the talking about using it in more of what I would consider a very fast paced environment right. versus like a milsim game. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that having both of our perspectives on this is gonna be very interesting. I hope you enjoy. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna start off with probably the most common mag pouch, or at least it was at one point, the close top yeah. mag pouch. These are included with tons of different setups like for free. Yeah. Uh, these, you see these in bundle kits all the time. And then they're also still incredibly popular with the real military and with Milsim players. Yeah. Uh, they have their advantages and they have their disadvantages. I personally don't really use them much at all. Yeah, uh, I'm, just, not, I'm right there with you. I don't, I'm not a fan. Yeah, I just feel like other options have come out that suit what I need mag pouches to do better. But the advantage of close top mag pouches is that they are the most secure pouches. Yep. You literally cannot get more secure than either a buckle or a Velcro flap tamped down over your magazine. You're not going to lose it. It's not coming out. No. I personally have never heard of anyone losing a magazine out of a close top pouch that Neither was closed. That's not a common story. No. But the disadvantage, obviously, is that that's an extra step you have to go through before you get your magazine out. Yeah. So you do have to rip the cover open, or you can do what some people do and like tuck Stuck it behind. Yeah. But then it's not a closed top pouch anymore. No. But no, you do get that. Out. But you do get that flexibility. Yeah. So I actually have this mounted on like my uh, Eagle RRV when I use that because I like the more classic, old school look of these on there. Mm -hmm. So then I'll run one with the the flap tucked behind and then the other two closed. So I have like backup magazines secured and then I have my speed reload source from the one open pouch. And the other nice thing about closed top pouches is they often carry multiple magazines. Yep. So you can fit two M4 uh, magazines in here or two 545 AK mags. Two 762 AK mags are a little more of a challenge. Yep. But you can get pouches that'll carry like three M4 mags. And they're all closed top though because by that point you really need the extra security. Those are nice because they also have the flexibility of running G36 mags. Yep. You can fit those in there and other various bulky uh, magazines that you might not be able to fit in other mag pouches aside from other mag pouches we'll be talking about later on. Yeah, so they're very flexible and they're very secure, but they're not the fastest. No. There's a reason that uh, that people have started incorporating other types of mag pouches as like emergency reload sources. Yeah. So I guess that's about all there is to say on these. They're yeah. pretty simple. You probably know what they are. Another nice thing about them, though, I do want to mention is, aside from being a mag pouch, these are great for holding other items than mags. Right. You can fit, like, uh, grenades, you can fit a pistol, or you can fit a beer, so... You know. <laughs> I was just going there, okay? <laughs> Beat me to the punch. Ha ha! <laughs> um, so, you know, they are flexible outside of that, too, but that's not being a mag pouch at that point. We were yeah. just talking about the advantages for mags. But that's close top pouches in a nutshell. All right, so next thing we're going to be talking about are taco pouches. Now, there are... A Bunch of variations of taco pouches. You got the double stack for two M4s. You got the double stack with a, a M4 and a pistol on the front, and then I believe they make it for 8K and pistol front, and and so and so on and so forth. I just have here my pistol pouches on top of my HSGI rig, and these are great because they are open top. I love open top pouches. Um, for various different things. I mean, I carry my uh, vector mags in here, I carry my ARP9 mags in here, and my pistol mags. So it fits a wide variety of different uh, pistol caliber uh, rifles and pistols in these mag pouches. Now, they are um, fabric with, I believe these are Kydex? Uh, well, they're a plastic. They're, like, they're plastic. a plastic. They're not they're, Kydex technically, but... But there's some sort of plastic on the sides to help the, re uh, the retention much much better and on top of that it does have a drawstring that's elastic they can make the sizing for whatever you want so if you have single stack pouches or single stack 1911 mags you can make it nice and tight so those hold there and you can loosen them if you have like little wider mags like high cap or glock yeah and the other nice thing about tacos is like that universality excuse my reach yeah. 
The other nice thing about Takas is that universality is in the rifle pouches too. Yep. And you have the flexibility to carry M4 mags, AK mags, uh, G36 mags if you cut off those little side tabs, yep. usually G3, SR25. These will carry whatever you want. Right. It's really a one pouch solution. I mean, hell, I can even take my AK mag out of here and put my damn phone in. Like, bam. <laughs> yeah, so there's just so much you can do with tacos. You can put knives, multi tools, flashlights, anything in I've here. I've seen I've seen these uh, the M4 to be specific um, be used as a uh, uh, a monster Banff can stuck in those as well. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a ton that you can do with them. Uh, and the other nice thing about tacos is they do have these little loops here, mm -hmm. so you can actually put like a drawstr or a shock cord retention on here if you desire. I don't really see many people using that, mm -hmm. but it's a feature that you can use. Yeah. And HSGI even makes covered tacos. Yes, they do. They just came out on two tacos. Yeah, ago. like I think they came out one or two years ago. Yeah, something like that. And it, so these are super flexible. But what's the downside? They're expensive. Very expensive. Yeah, tacos are expensive. They're not cheap. You can buy them yeah. in a variety of different ways. You can buy them all, like all four. You can buy singles. You can buy doubles, which are here. Uh, and it just comes in a variety of different uh, colors and uh, setups and everything like that. My, what I found when using them on a belt is that this part right here, the plastic rubs on your elbows if you're trying to go down for a reach or trying to grab an objective or some, something like that. I've noticed that my arm would get cut up just by trying to get down and reaching further. Now that could just be myself, but I don't know if you guys have any experiences with that down in the comments below. I have, but that's my thing. I don't put them so much on my, uh, hips anymore because now that's since I got another pouch that we'll be talking about in a minute and up I like them on the chest because right, they're really nice up here the thing with tacos though on the belt another thing I want to mention is tacos are elastic nice retention yep. but they are not as solid retention as another option we'll be talking about later and because the pouch is flexible due to the shock cord it is Im kind of impossible to get like as solid a retention as you can get on, say, like a pure Kydex pouch or a Kydex insert pouch because you do have that shot cord elasticity. And I'll have these pouches cinched down really tight and I'll still find every now and then that I'll look down and I'm missing a pistol mag all of a sudden. And maybe that's not something other people run into. My pouches are older, let's admit it, because I don't want to replace them. They're super, they're super expensive. But you can absolutely still lose magazines out of here. Definitely. That is the disadvantage of open top pouches in general is you can lose magazines, but there are options aside from tacos that I find have a little bit more solid retention until you get into like having a uh, shot cord or a drawstring. Uh, so tacos are great for their flexibility and you can stack them. They have pals webbing on here. Yep. So they still have all the advantages of like other modular open top molly pouches, but they do have some limitations, just things to be aware of. I also find that you don't get as good a grip on like an M4 magazine as from a taco as you can get with some other things. Yeah. AK mags though, I don't think there's anything better. <laughs> so it's just AK mags, tacos were built for them. Okay. So I did just mention open top with the drawstring. So I have my D3CRX on here. These are actually elastic pistol pouches and we're gonna go over elastic in more detail in a minute. Yep. Um, but I want to talk about drawstring retention. So if you see here, I've got drawstring over, well, shot cord rather, shot cord with pull tabs over these two pistol mags. And the advantage of this is that you still have a little bit faster maybe than like a Velcro tab that you really have to pull because this is just a rubberized tab. You just knock that off and then get at your magazine. So that's nice because you do have that physical retention that helps keep the magazine in the pouch aside from just the elastic. But the downside is that you can knock these tabs off accidentally. They can slide off as you're moving really heavy. So you really have to pay attention to them and you have to size your shot cord drawstring appropriately so that you have this tab nice and tight on top of whatever pistol mag you're putting in here. Otherwise, you're still gonna be likely to lose it. But then you also have the limitation of the shot cord doesn't help as much when you put like small items, like say, a multi-tool in here, but at that point you're not really relying on it as much. There's just there's nothing to catch it, so things to be aware of. Um, but next, now that I mentioned elastic, why don't we talk about elastic? 
All right, so the next thing that we have here are the Blue Force Gear Helium Whisper System. I use the full name. Uh, these <laughs> fancy. are fancy, very fancy. These are elastic retention. These are yep. open top pouches. There's, they're very minimal. The thing that I like about these is once you put some sort of, uh, or if you put a mag in here, they stick out, and then when you pull it out, it falls flat. So yes. you don't have that, you know, rubbing as I mentioned with the taco pouches on the hips. So that's why I like these much better. Um, the problem with elastic retention um, magazine pouches is that they wear out. You can see right here that I've been using these for a long time and putting in pistol uh, mags after mag after mag just kind of wears this out right here. Eventually you're gonna have to replace it. These are cheap-ish. I mean they're right on par with something like the uh, um, high-speed gear. They're a little bit cheaper but they're right on par so they're not expensive but they're also really not that cheap so they're like right in that middle. Um, also the mounting system is velcro. So, so you be aware of these the uh, taco pouches are malice, malice clips. clips and the other ones are uh what are they called oh molly like just Mo standard. It's regular with the, with the little button tab thingy um there's really not much to say about these other side from the i just like the fact that they fold flat up against your body that's my favorite part about these yeah the helium whisper system and there are other variations yeah, that tons. are similar um but we use that as an example because it's the most prominent but that's the nice part is that even with the mags in there yep. they're super low profile Very so low. you'll see a lot of people using these as like their front facing plate carrier yep. pouch on top of like an insert Mm -hmm. or they just won't run an insert and they'll just use those because it's right. really minimalist, really low profile. And then once you take the magazine out, there's no snag hazard. Exactly. It's just that, as you mentioned, eventually they wear out. That's the nature of elastic and you will have to replace them. They are kind of prone to ripping. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not 500 or 1,000 denier Cordura nylon. They're not as durable. They're not meant to be as durable. They're meant to be kind of a wear item, but they work really well. The other problem with them, though, is that reinserting. Yeah, you can't reinsert pain. at all. I mean, it you can, but it's going to take you a good minute because, like I said, they fold flat, so you can yeah. see that that little tab that is just sort of open from me using it so much. There's not a lot of room for you to insert your mags. So if you're the type of person that likes to reinsert your mag after they're spent, I wouldn't recommend going with this because it's going to be a pain in the butt to reinsert. Yeah. If you just use a, a dump pouch, these are great. Yeah. They come in a variety of different colors. They have the wolf gray, like you see here, they have M4, uh, uh, pistol, they have double stag, all sorts of stuff. They come in like different cuts and whatever. So these are great for if you just want to be low profile. Yep. And then moving along, the new released Speed QB pouches I just picked up, as well did Eric. Um, they are kind of a breed between uh, the Helium Whisper system here from Blue Force Gear and... Just I'd a regular the, pouch kind yeah. of thing. It's kind of in that between there. Um, they are elastic retention. Again, if you're the type of person that likes to reinsert, probably not a great option. Uh, the cool thing about these, if you have like a speed QB pouch like I do, or many of you other speed softers out there that do, these have Velcro on the front and on the back, so you can put them in between the belt and the uh, the quick strip. So that way they're completely invisible when you're running around. Now that's great for you to double stack more, so you can have pistols on the inside and M4 on the outside, or M4 on the inside and pistol on the outside. There's a lot of different combinations you can do with these, and you can stack them above on top of each other as well. So those are great. But again, these are elastic retention, so you, they're gonna wear out. So, it, and the problem with the SPQB ones, I don't know how much they're actually gonna be keeping these in stock all the time because as you know with the belts they go out of stock really quickly and then they take forever to get back in stock and I feel, have a feeling this is what's going to happen with the pouches themselves if you really want more and like let's say a couple years down the road they're not around anymore good luck finding them again. Yeah so I mean they'll be on speed QB to keep those in stock right. uh, but the other nice thing about those is you mentioned the speed QB belt but you can also do it with like a plate carrier. Correct. You could put those as an insert in a plate carrier or even if you have like I have a spirit of systems rig yep. and these remind me a lot of the inserts that spirit of system sells for their rig so you could probably use these in there too. Um, but again they come with some of the other traditional challenges of elastic yep. difficult to reinsert and they wear out eventually but the nice part is that the real tight elastic all around as compared to a taco, I find is slightly more solid retention. Yes. Just because the entire magazine is encased with a solid friction fit of super tight material. 
I want to real quick just insert those real quick a lot of people have been asking me what you can fit in them and I'm just gonna give you a quick example right here you can put the vector mags in these BQB pouches you can put the ARP 9 as well as a high cap I'm sure you guys seen those yep. in pictures and stuff but just to let you guys know that they fit vector and ARP 9s no problem I'm sure you've seen the ARP 9 on pictures as well but a lot of people ask me about the vector they work fine I mean they're pretty in there nice and snug vectors really thick so with two C's I hate you so much <laughs> Um, all right, so now we're going to get into what some more modern people are really using a lot of, and I use this a ton. You yes, probably you do. Yeah, as Amy commented while we were filming the uh, demos for this, she was just like, yeah, you can tell that you use that one the most. He does. Well, he has like two of these. Yeah, Maybe so three. I don't know at this point. I have it's here a problem. <laughs> no, it's not a problem. It's fine. I don't need help. Um, but the D3CRX here is an open top magazine pouch, but with... Kydex, well not Kydex technically, these are just molded plastic, but the same idea with molded plastic inserts and pouches with molded plastic or Kydex inserts are getting really popular. Yeah. Uh, STAC makes a bunch of different varieties. Uh, there's a bunch of different makers who will offer Kydex inserts for like JPC front flaps or who will offer inserts for the D3. Uh, you know, Haley Strategic has their own inserts. I think they're called like the MP2 inserts. And you with, know better than I. And with the D3 in particular, what I like is that some of these pouches with these types of inserts can fit a variety of magazines. Most are kind of M4 specialized. You know, the AR-15 is the most popular weapon system in America. Uh, and it's also an incredibly popular weapon system for Airsoft too, so relevant to all of you guys. So like things like the STAC Kiwi pouches are all AR specialized. But then the D3, it allows you to open top with AK... M4, and if you get like the D3CRH, the heavy SR25 M14 Scar H magazines. So it's an incredible degree of flexibility. Special shout out to the pouch design from Haley Strategic and these inserts because there's a lot to love. Uh, but the general idea is that you get a blend of the retention of raw kydex with the flexibility of molly pouches or with the flexibility of an entire chest rig. Um, and raw kydex retention is in my opinion some of the most solid retention you can get until you go to close top right. because then you have a plastic friction that's molded around the magazine and it really keeps things from coming out. I mean, if I shake this rig upside down, these things aren't coming out. So I've never actually lost a rifle magazine out of a pouch with a Kydex insert. Right. That's just awesome. So. That's the coolness about that kind of blend of a system, but then you get to straight raw Kydex. Shout out to Lutz from the Gun Gamers team, who's been making a bunch of Kydex stuff lately. He's really good at it too. Yeah, he's getting pretty good at it. Uh, and the nice part about Kydex is, like I said, the retention is awesome. And you can do a lot with Kydex. There's a lot of different designs that you can make. There's a lot of different uh, weapons that you can accommodate. We have... You know, single stack 1911 mags here, then AR-15 stuff here. He's working on some AK stuff. But the disadvantage of Kydex is that, number one, you need to have it made. Yes. And usually there's a lead time associated with getting exactly what you want from Kydex. Yep. And number two, it can be expensive. Yeah, it depends on who, you, what maker you go with. Yeah, because there's a lot of hand labor involved in making Kydex. And as a result, this thing can be just as much as a taco pouch but not have the same flexibility. Exactly. So it's kind of tough. It's like, do you want that super solid modern plastic retention of this is never going anywhere no matter how much you shake it, but it pulls out super easily? <laughs> That's awesome. Call 1-800. <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah, now I get too free. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is that you have to buy one of these or a multitude of these for every single gun you own. Yes. So if you have a 1911 and an FNX and a high kappa, you probably have to buy different Kydex for all of those, unless you find someone who makes just generic double stack 45 with uh, a tension screw, but that is still expensive. And then you're limited to double stack 45. You'll need something else for double stack nine millimeter. Uh, you need separate ones for M4s and AKs. It's just a laundry list of reasons why Kydex is the best to use, but the worst to get. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, then the other problem is that if you put these like on your chest, they're bulky. Very bulky. Plus, I mean, look, look how, just for two, look how wide this is. Yeah. yeah I mean, trying to get four squeezed onto one plate here, it's kind of, it's going to be rough. Yeah. So 
it's great, but it also has its limitations. So with all this said, what do you personally prefer to use and in what situations? Uh, so I love the uh, H or not HSUI, uh, Blue Force gear because I like how it fl folds flat after I use it. Because again, like I mentioned, I ha I've used the taco pouches for a year now and every time I reach down, it scrapes up the bottom of my arm. Could just be me. I could be completely alone in this, but that's what happened to me and I was just, I don't know, I kind of like these one much better, but this one's getting worn out so much that I kind of had to switch over and I was using the taco pouches exclusively, but now that Speaky Bee came out with these, now these are my go-to because they offer the same thing as the uh, Blue Force gear and they're swaggy Speaky Bee pouches and I'm all about that. Plus I like the variety. I mean, I can put it on the inside of my belt or I can put it on the outside. I like them outside because I like having patches. I've got tons of patches and I like repping all of you guys for sending me stuff over. So I like repping that. So that's why I like my, uh, what do you call it? Um, elastic retention for anything that I use. Because again, like I said, it, it fits everything that I, I have. I have, it'll fit my MP7, which I just recently got. It'll fit my Vector, my ARP9, my Hag Kappa, my single stack 1911. So everything that I use fits in this one pouch and that's what I prefer to use. Now, for my chest rig, I like the HSGI because I mean I don't have to worry about anything getting in the way and this is what I use just as a you know one of those things that when we go to an operation I love using this because it's nice and flat and I look milsome AF. All right then. <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of the tacos uh, for my battle belt just for like general use so those actually are permanently mounted on my Ronin Tactics belt, because then I can use it with my M4, my AK, whatever else I'm using that day. But if I'm not using my Ronin Tactics belt and I'm going to slide something onto my belt, I like to have a little bit more customization. So I'm actually having Lutz make me M4 and possibly AK Kydex because- you possibly, you are making AK. Well, yes, <laughs> yeah. um, Just depends on what I feel like paying him for it. Right. Uh, so I like having the Kydex because I find that that is the fastest and easiest method for me to reload from for my belt. I like using my belt as a speed reload source. Uh, as for chest rigs, as I mentioned, I am generally a fan of just using my D3 all the time. Yep. Yeah, as Avery <laughs> said, you can tell I use my D3 the use most. It a lot. So, and I think a large part of that has to do with the fact that I adore having that low profile, but really well retained uh, rifle magazine option of the just open top pouch with the Kydex insert. So I'm a Kydex guy. I love having the option of Kydex retention. I think that's the most modern, easiest to use thing that there is. If I'm not using my D3, then it can depend on whatever else I'm using. Because at that point, I'm making a choice to use something else for the sake of variety or for the sake of looks. But if you're asking me what my favorite thing is, it's Kydex retention, so. All right guys, that'll about do it for this video. If you like this, give us a like rating down below. Let us know what you'd like to use in the comments down below. We'd like to get your discussion on that. Yep. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But once again, my name is Amy. And I'm E House. And thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Thank you for watching this video from Gun Gamers. We hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. If you want to see more content from us, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to help support the channel, be sure to click the link below to buy a patch. Praise Judy.